for the Fubuki. Yeah, we can look at what the Fubuki is. Vault skill gives us some thumbs up, yeehaw. Alright, so what is the Fubuki? Should be Japanese tier 6, I think it is? Yeah. So, first things first, this is my build for when I did the Fubuki. Uh, don't care about the AA, because your AA sucks. Uh, I use Dead Flags if I'm trying to be serious, but if you didn't want to use Dead Flags, you could use Magazine Mod. Um, and then you got Armament Mod. So, Armament, so your Torps don't get incapacitated. Engine Room is pretty standard for Destroyers, because you don't want stuff knocked out. Not that you can't deal with it, because you should always take Last Stand, but it's nice to have it knock knocked out in the first place, so there's that. I would not worry about engine boost mod or the reduced fire chance. I don't think that's going to mean anything for you. Uh, torpedo tubes, you are a torp boat. You are not a gunboat. So you want your torps to matter, and having torpedoes that move a little faster means it's slightly more likely to get a kill, or to hit, rather, because it's less leading time. So definitely the torp mod on that. And then uh, I, I prefer propulsion mod on destroyers, uh, so that when you are at rest and you're like, oh, need to move, you're going to move a lot faster. Steering in this situation, 2.5 rudder, you don't need steering. And uh, damage control, no. As far as depth charges, I mean, that's going to be a personal choice when coming down to it. But this is... I don't know how many people are going to take the depth, char depth charge mod where you would go from having a number of charges 2 up to a number of charges 4, which means you could go after subs uh, much better. But this is sacrificing potentially uh, your life. Because this is something that can help you stay alive, whereas this is something that can help you kill a DD more. Uh, usually staying alive is going to matter more than being able to harass better. Nope. Let's just look at commanders in general. So, I don't care. Um, Alright, so if we look at destroyers. Can we actually do this? No. How about we do this? Sign a commander. Could recruit one for free. Boop. There we go. So we don't get any skill points for this, but we can look at it. So realistically, these little yellow marks are going to be the uh, the base guide. Or, hey, you want to play the ship? Why don't you pick all this stuff? Yay, you can pick all these things. And in general, this is going to be okay. It's going to be functional. Uh, sometimes it's actually, the recommended is pretty bang on for what you might actually want to play. But let's take a step back and kind of figure this out piece by piece. So first off, uh, turret traverse. Don't care. Why? Because you're not a gunboat. Um, your guns can hit hard, but you don't shoot very well, you don't have many guns, you're not a gunboat. Flood chance. Your torps probably have 300% flood chance, so this is not a plus 30% chance to get a flood, it's basically a plus 10% chance to get a flood. Because your base flood chance is going to be fairly high. So, this is a little deceptive. Basically it just means you have a higher chance to get a flood. But hitting torps is hard enough, so I wouldn't necessarily go for this. Shell switch, you're not a gunboat. Incoming fire alert, not a bad idea, but realistically, hopefully you're never spotted. You're just that sneaky little dude that's hiding around blowing stuff up with torpedoes. Although the detection on the Fubuki is not very good. So realistically, it's preventative maintenance. Why? Because if your main turrets or torpedoes get knocked out, they're gonna take longer to reload. If your steering gear or engine become knocked out, you're gonna be taking more damage as you're slower to respond. Speaking of, you're going to take Last Stand, because you always take Last Stand in Destroyers, because your stuff always breaks. Your rudder breaks, your engine breaks, your everything breaks. So, because of this, in any time you are being shot at, your stuff is going to start breaking, and rather than just being stuck lazily spinning in a circle, because your engine's out and your rudder's out, you're going to be able to continue running away and maneuvering somewhat. And some is better than not. So these two skills are basically mandatory on destroyers in general. Now, for newer players, basically if you're asking me to give you a build, you're probably a newer player. So for newer players, having more health means being less dead. Uh, it's harder to kill you if you're not if you haven't run out of health yet. So survivability expert is often mandatory for destroyers because you're going to get shot, you're going to get spotted, you're going to have stuff that doesn't go your way. And having more health means you're less dead. If you want to not take Survivability Expert, you can. 
if you feel confident enough that you are making the decision and you know the decision you're making. <clears throat> but make sure that you feel confident that you're making the right decision before you just go ahead and do it. So until you feel that confidence, always survivability expert. And then lastly, concealment. You are a torpedo boat. You are not a gunboat. You don't want to take gunfights. You want to be sneaky, stealthy, and throwing torpedoes and making things dead. That's what you want to do. So these four, uh, these four skills are absolutely the place where you're going to start. After this, start looking into some other options. You're a torpedo boat. Having some torp reload is going to be good. But this is going to cover reload for your torpedoes, as well as your AA, although that doesn't matter, as well as your guns, although they suck. This in general is just considered a great skill, so basically it's almost always considered mandatory. You don't have to take it, because if you don't, if you're not at half health, if, if you don't have any damage, you don't get any benefit from this skill at all. And if you find that as a player, if you get spotted, you die, there's no middle ground, then you might not get any benefit from this skill at all, because then you get spotted and you die. So, this might be an advanced skill, but in general, as long as you're not dead yet, you're probably getting something out of it, so it's usually a good choice. But that's up to a personal choice. So that's going to be the first 13. After this is where you start wondering, what am I going to do? What do I want? What am I accessorizing for? Now you'll notice the little tags over here. Reload your torps faster. Your torps go faster. Sure, torp skills. Your torp boat makes perfect sense. But your torps going a little faster might help you land torps, but it's not the difference between landing torps and completely missing. It's help. <coughs> your torps reloading a little faster isn't the difference between you murdering everybody and not murdering everybody, but it helps. If we look at consumable expert, superintendent, sorry, you're gonna have an additional smoke and an additional speed boost. Three smokes is a lot of smokes. You don't necessarily need them, but it's not a bad thing to have in your back pocket. The engine boost is similarly ni a nice thing to have as well. These are all nice things to have. This is going to give you a little longer on your smoke deployment, a little longer on your engine boost, so that could be useful. There's options here. I wouldn't really go into the guns because you're not a gunboat, so shooting faster, shooting farther, that's not going to matter. So at this point, we've got a lot of points and we don't really know where to put them because nothing really screams, holy shit, pick me. Holy shit, pick me now. There's two options that are on the four line that are going to stand out more than others, however. One is going to be swift and silence. You're a torp boat. You don't want to be spotted. Part of not being spotted means going faster than somebody who wants to catch you and kill you. So if you're not spotted, you go faster, which means you can position better to get torps into people. You can position better to get away from people that are threats. You can position better in trying to outmaneuver other people. Basically, in this game, the higher your ship speed is, the more powerful your engine is, the more responsive you are. The faster you move forward, the faster you slow down, the faster you reverse, the, you know, all those things have that interaction. So giving yourself additional engine power is giving yourself additional chances to uh, avoid combat, of put yourself in a better position. But understand that swift and silence means if you're ever detected, if an enemy does run you down, you don't have that extra speed. So these four points don't mean anything if you're detected. And even if you are detected, you have worse ma main battery guns. So that leaves the other option, which is RPF. Radio location is what it's called, but a lot of people say radio position finder because I guess that's what it used to be called. This is going to tell you the nearest ship to you. And it's extremely important for the Japanese line to me. Why? Because you're not scared of a battleship because you outrun a battleship. They're never going to find you. They're never going to be able to run you down and kill you outside of something strange or silly. The thing you're scared of is an enemy DD. Somebody that wants to come over and shoot you in the face and shoot you in the face and shoot you in the face and kill you. Because you can throw torps at them, but if the DD dodges your torps, they shoot you and you die. If they get close enough and they spot you, their friends shoot you and you die. Having radio location means knowing what's closest to you, which is probably a destroyer, which means you know where the destroyer is so that it's not going to just trip across you or you're going to trip across it. You're going to have an idea as to where the enemy is so you can play around that. So let's take radio location. Now you've got 17 points. Theoretically, you could have up to four more. And we talked about this. 
this is nice, this is nice, whatever. There's a whole bunch of options and stuff here. But for the most part, it doesn't matter. If you wanted to, you could take Swift and Silence as well. Because having slightly faster reloading torpedoes, slightly faster torpedoes, this is not the difference between a game or not. Unless, like, you're an extremely high-end player and every single little difference is the difference between winning and losing. Um, if you wanted to go with this build, this would give you maneuverability, this would give you information, this would give you some additional reload if you do take some shots but you survive. This helps you for when you do get shot and stuff gets broken. This breaks less and if it's broken you still live. This helps you when you get shot because you have more health. And then concealment is very important so that you can stay undetected in the first place. So this would probably be a build I could recommend for somebody that's new. Understanding that you could move these points around if you wanted to. Because as a new player it might be hard for you to make this be amazing. Uh, and these are points you could move around as well. Uh, so, yeah, knowing that these seven points are something that you could put somewhere else, this would probably be the build that I would recommend for a new player.